Uh, we're going to roll into our next speaker. Uh, I'm going to introduce Matt Paddock. Matt Paddock. Sorry. Matt Doc is what he goes by. And Matt is uh, a guy who understands social media and does PR using that stuff. And he's working over at Dominion. It's that big tower across the street. And they do like everything, right? But tonight he's not going to talk about that. Tonight he's going to talk about one of his passions or one of his hobbies. Come here, Matt, talk about improvisation. Matt. Thanks. So uh, the irony of this presentation is I'm, I'm not actually going to improvise anything, which uh, I think my fellow presenters thought I had taken the easy way out uh, talking about improvisation. So I have actually practiced, and the only part of this that will be improvised is your reaction. So in uh, 1935, a, a scientist named Erwin Schrodinger uh, was working out how to demonstrate principles of quantum mechanics and quantum physics in real life. His experiment, which he devised but never conducted, was to put a cat in a box where it would randomly be exposed to a toxic gas. So the random event meant the cat was either alive or dead, but scientists believed that because of uncertainty at a quantum level, the cat was both alive and dead until it was observed. In other words, until someone opened the box and took a look. So my experience playing jazz tells me that improv and Schrodinger share this common quality of known and unknown, of being in this hybrid state. You have the player's intentions on one hand, the audience interpretation on the other. And you have to remember that you know, jazz music was only approximately documented originally in what were called fake books, later called real books once their legal status was clarified. And this, this idea of faking it says that jazz musicians understood there was a parallel narrative going on in the audience. Traditional jazz mostly is about remixing uh, existing pieces and parts of music as opposed to making stuff up. What the, what the unschooled audience hears as original uh, is, is really more like inside jokes that jazz musicians tell each other. Meditation is a similar study in uh, contrast, thinking and not thinking. Science is, is just now coming to grips with the impact that uh, meditation has on the body and the brain. So maybe one day this unmeasurable and uh, you know, intangible will be better understood. Competitive sports is another great example of where training and you know, rigorous practice has to be balanced by the ability to react spontaneously for no other reason than safety and security, right? Dancers are also such a great example of this, uh, you know, incredible dedication, uh, learning complex routines and, uh, you know, individually and in groups, but being able to play and riff off of one another in the spur of the moment. And although dance and jazz keep improv alive, it's important to remember that Western classical music was once a hotbed of improvisation, where you know, players are now thought of as just playing the music that's on the page. They originally valued theme, variation, and improvisation, much like jazz. So the examples up to this point have been about remixing content. But artists have tried to introduce Schrodinger-style randomness into their performances. The audience have generally hated this. So, Anton Webern is an example. He used, uh, created mathematically perfect compositions that ironically sounded even more abstract than the most far out jazz improv. Twelve-tone music, as it was called, was just incomprehensible to most people's ears, which made it sound completely random. Frank Zappa used studio editing techniques to mash up two different versions of the same song. So the live interaction that you thought you heard between the musicians was just your own uh, perception happening in your own head. So we think of music as being about communication and emotion, but composers like John Cage were working diligently to strip music down to its essence, down to sound and silence. Buddhists were very interested in perception. They created these crazy word puzzles called koans uh, that were, again, designed to strip away earthly distraction and preconceived notions. They were a little bit like taking a quiz with no right answers, uh, working out your enlightenment. And if abstract meditation wasn't your thing, there was Pure Land Buddhism, where disciples were asked to meditate on this pure land of rebirth and enlightenment, which is a little bit like the Western idea of heaven, ironically. And some Buddhist masters took this contradictory practice to extremes. Master Ikkyu, for example, uh, encouraged people to embrace these uh, contradictory lifestyles, these taboo lifestyles, drinking and loose women. He just saw that as part of his twisty path on the way to enlightenment. And musicians like Ornette Coleman and Sun Ra also broke with their tradition. They mixed swing and blues with 
really, uh, you know, some far out improv that, that even educated listeners at the time thought was, was too far. And they were accused of religious or, or of musical heresy, much like it accused religious heresy. You have modern masters like John Zorn that mix rock and jazz and game theory, really blurring the lines between composition and improvisation. So uh, in parting, I would just encourage all of you to take some improv with you, to think about remixing and rethinking the parts of your life that may seem a bit boring or ordinary today in search of something extraordinary. And thank you for listening. <laughs>